Hello everyone, I'm Bo Han from George Mason University. In this video, I will present our Mobicom 2020 paper, Vivo, Visibility Aware Mobile Volumetric Video Streaming. This was a joint work with Yu Liu and Feng Qian from the University of Minnesota. This work was done when I was at at and Labs Research. The emerging volumetric video captures a 3D space. In the volumetric video, each frame could be a point cloud or a 3D mesh. A point cloud is simply an unsorted set of 3D points with color information. A mesh has not only points but also edges and faces. We focus on point cloud mainly because it's simple and flexible. We can extend our proposed K concept to mesh-based volumetric video streaming as well. Just in case you have not heard about volumetric video before, let me play a video that shows the display of a volumetric video on the right and how the rendered content changes when the viewer on the left moves in 3D space. Volumetric video streaming is challenging due to the huge amount of data we need to deliver. Here is an example video with 720 Mbps bitrate. When watching this video, we will use up 20 GB data in less than 4 minutes. One possible solution is viewport adaptive streaming, which has been explored in 360 degree video streaming. The key idea is to deliver mainly content in the user's viewport. However, there are several questions when applying it for volumetric video streaming. For example, on partitioning overhead for enabling viewport adaptation and accurate prediction for six degrees of freedom viewport movement. In order to address the challenges of huge amounts of data for delivery, we took the following approach. To determine the partitioning overhead and gain a deeper understanding of volumetric video, we first conducted a systematic study of various aspects of point cloud. To check whether we can extend the viewport adaptive streaming to volumetric videos, we investigated the viewport movement patterns and the viewport prediction through a user study. Based on the observations from the above study, we designed, implemented, and evaluated Vivo, a volumetric video streaming system with several visibility-aware optimizations. Our experimental results demonstrate that Vivo can save on average 40% mobile data without affecting visual quality. Vivo takes advantage of point cloud visibility. The intuition is that not all points are visible. We consider three visibility-related cases. The first one is called viewport visibility. If we partition this point cloud into cells, the viewport in 3D space determines which cells are visible. Thus, we may not need to stream the four green cells as they are likely not visible. We can use the saved bandwidth to improve the viral quality of visible content. The second one is called occlusion visibility. Consider this new location of the viewer. We know that the content in the three green cells may not be visible due to occlusion by content in other cells. Thus, we may not need to deliver the three green cells. The last one is called distance visibility. Suppose the distance between the viewer and the content is 3 meters. Sending a point cloud with 60% points may already be enough for achieving a satisfactory viral quality. If the distance becomes shorter, we should send more points to ensure a good viral quality. We can send fewer points when the distance is longer. The reason is that the size of displayed content depends on the viewing distance. Occlusion visibility and distance visibility are unique to volumetric videos by exploring depth information in 3D data. All this sounds promising. However, there are several challenges here. For example, how to determine whether content in a cell is occluded? How to know the most suitable point density given the viewing distance? Before addressing these challenges, let me first introduce the volumetric video dataset for this study. 
Since volumetric videos are not yet widely available, we capture the multiple videos ourselves. This figure shows a setup of three depth cameras and a marker for synchronizing video streams. We constructed a diverse dataset with five videos. P1, P2, and P3 captured scenes with close-by people. M2 and M4 captured scenes with people at different locations. These numbers are the numbers of people in the videos. The raw video bitrate ranges from 300 Mbps to higher than 800 Mbps. We evaluated the compression performance of several open source libraries and selected Draco from Google to compress these videos. It achieves a lossless compression ratio from 4 to 6. The partitioning overhead could be as high as 67%. Partitioning overhead measures the increase of compressed video size caused by partitioning because it may affect compression efficiency. With this dataset, we conducted a user study to analyze viewport movement patterns. We divided the users into two groups. One group used the Magic Leap 1 headset, and the other used a smartphone for watching the videos. These two plots are the viewport trajectory in 3D space for headset users. The top one is for video P2 and the bottom for M4. The red dot is the initial location of a viewer and the green dot is the content location. For example, two close by people for P2 and four people at different locations for M4. These two plots on the right are for smartphone users. As we can see, the viewport trajectory depends on not only display device but also video content. The trajectory is more smooth for headset users than smartphone users. For video P2, viewers moved around the displayed content as shown by this circling pattern in this figure. Whereas for M4, most of the time, viewers looked around to check each person by only rotating the viewport. The key observation is that viewers did watch the displayed content from different angles and at different distances. Based on the observations from the user study, we proposed three visibility-aware optimizations for Vivo. At a high level, if we can predict how users move, we can determine video content to fetch based on how, what, and where viewers perceive it. However, viewport prediction may not always be accurate. Thus, we proposed a conservative solution that dynamically changes point density of a to-be-fetched cell based on several factors. The first optimization is related to viewport visibility. It's a simple extension of viewport adaptive streaming for 360-degree videos. Next, I will focus on occlusion visibility and distance visibility that are unique to volumetric video streaming. Occlusion visibility first determines whether a cell may be occluded by others using the Rebox intersection algorithm in computational geometry. This is cell-level occlusion. What we really need is content-level occlusion. However, since we do not have the coordinates of points in a cell at the client side before downloading that cell, it's difficult to know exactly whether the content in that cell will be occluded. Determining content occlusion at the server side may cause scalability issues. Thus, what we proposed in the system design of Vivo is to reduce the point density of the target cell to make this optimization robust. We define occlusion level to determine the point density using the information available on the client side, such as the position and the number of points of a cell. We consider the number of surrounding cells that may occlude the target cell and reduce the point density of an occluded cell. We also consider their relative point density. For example, if the target cell has thousands of points, but the front cell has only 10 points, very likely the content in the target cell will not be occluded. In this case, 
we will not reduce the point density of the target cell. For distance visibility, the key question is how to determine point density based on the viewing distance. I will answer this question using this figure we created. In this figure, the x-axis is the distance from the viewer to the displayed content. The y-axis is the viewer quality of the rendered content measured by a metric called SSIM, structural similarity. We created a snapshots of sampled point clouds at different viewing distances. We sampled these point clouds at different density levels, 20, 40, 60, and 80 percent. SSM measures the visual quality of a specified point cloud using the full-size point cloud as the baseline by comparing the similarity among them. A value of 1 only happens when the two point clouds are the same. As you can see from this figure, at a given distance, a dense point cloud has a better visual quality than a sparse one. For point clouds with the same density, viewing them at a longer distance leads to a higher visual quality. We know from the literature that SSM value higher than 0 0.98 means no visual loss. Thus, we can derive a model from this figure to determine point density based on the viewing distance. For example, if the distance is more than 6.2 meters, we can reduce point density to only 20% without affecting visual quality, because the SSM values of these point clouds are higher than 0 0.98. To demonstrate the effectiveness of the three optimizations, we propose the VIVO, a visibility-aware volumetric video streaming system. This figure shows the system architecture of VIVO. VIVO predicts future viewport on mobile devices using lightweight machine learning models such as linear regression. After requesting the cells and getting them from the server, we use multiple decoders to make them available for display as early as possible. To smooth playback when the viewer changes viewport, we decouple decoding and rendering by buffering decoded point clouds for a short period of time. You can find the detailed design in our paper. To evaluate the performance of Vivo, we built a proof-of-concept implementation. On the client side, we used the Android NDK for the key building blocks such as viewport prediction, visibility-aware optimizations, and point cloud decoding. We used the Android SDK for others. On the server side, we build a custom protocol to communicate with the client over TCP. We compared the performance of Vivo with the baseline that downloads the entire point cloud through both controlled experiments and experiments on commercial 5G networks. We compared the performance of Vivo and the baseline by replaying viewport movement traces collected during the user study. Let's now take a look at the effectiveness of VIVO on mobile data reduction. The y-axis of this figure is the normalized bytes of VIVO over the baseline. The lower the better. The first bar is a mixed result for two videos M2 and M4 that were used in our user study. The other two bars are for M2 and M4 separately. Using only viewport visibility, the median mobile traffic reduction is around 35%. When combined with viewport visibility, occlusion visibility can further reduce mobile data usage by 2%. Applying all three optimizations results in an additional 7% reduction. These optimizations lead to no degradation of viral quality. This is demonstrated by the measured SSM values for these setups, which are all higher than 0 0.98, the threshold for lossless content delivery. The key takeaway here is that Vivo can significantly reduce mobile data usage without affecting visual quality. We run the previous experiments over a wireless link with high enough bandwidth to demonstrate data reduction. Next, I will show you the viral quality improvement of Vivo in a dynamic environment. 
we conducted a user study with 12 participants, each watching more than 10 pairs of videos using Vivo and the baseline. We asked the viewers to rate the viral quality using mean or opinion score from 1 to 5, the higher the better. In this figure, the x-axis is the viral quality difference and the y-axis is the CDF. A positive number means Vivo performed better than the baseline. Vivo had a worse quality than the baseline for only 9% of the experiments. The reason is that Vivo does not fetch the entire point cloud and uses the saved bandwidth to improve the viral quality of visible content. The figure on the right shows data usage, which is similar to the figures on the previous slide. Overall, Vivo downloaded a similar amount of data as the baseline. The key takeaway here is that Vivo dramatically improves viral quality in a dynamic environment. We have also done other experiments. We evaluated the two interaction methods, headset and smartphone. We found that the headset offers more flexible and convenient viewport movement for users than the smartphone, which leads to more opportunities for Vivo's optimizations. We conducted the performance evaluations of Vivo on commercial 5G networks, and the results were consistent with the controlled experiments. We studied the impact of the cell size and found that fine-grained partitioning may not further reduce data usage. The evaluation of decoding efficiency showed that Vivo outperformed the baseline in terms of the store time. This is because by applying the three visibility-aware optimizations, the client would fetch mainly visible content and thus reduce the decoding overhead. We also measured the energy consumption and the resource utilization of Vivo. The results are acceptable. Please refer to our paper for these additional experiments. To conclude, we conducted a first measurement study of volumetric videos to understand their encoding efficiency, partitioning overhead, viewport movement patterns, and viewport predictability. Motivated by the observations from the study, we proposed the Vivo, a full-fledged visibility-aware volumetric video streaming system. Our extensive performance evaluation shows that Vivo can significantly reduce mobile data usage without affecting the quality of user experience. In terms of future work, we plan to investigate inter-point cloud compression to further improve the streaming efficiency of Vivo. We also plan to leverage a super resolution for volumetric video streaming. The idea here is to downsample point clouds and then stream the low quality version along with a trained machine learning model. The client will upsample the received point cloud to get the high quality version. By doing this, we can further reduce mobile data usage of volumetric video streaming. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to send us an email.